Welcome to Tales from the Flipside. We're bringing you another episode of Deal or Flipside. Let's go ahead and introduce all the players. Hey, this is Sleepy John Helen from uh, Northeast Ohio. Ohio is a spot where you don't want to come and dig. <laughs> this uh, is uh, Red Hood Comic. What's up, Sean from California? I don't know if you can dig a... Uh, uh, I think digging's better in Ohio. I've seen lately than uh, than it is out here in California. Hey, this is Phil with Vintage Comics and Toys, repping Long Beach, California today. Hey everybody, it's your main man Mercer. Now we are coming at you, Ohio. You don't want to come here. <laughs> you guys never leave anything behind, man. <laughs> and I'm Aaron. Uh, you can catch me in Texas. Uh, also, uh, check out Comic Book Food Chain. Uh, so, I have special books today. I actually didn't pick any of these books today. So, some of our panelists, Mercer Knott and Phil, have p picked some books for us to compare. And uh, The Mighty Mel V. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, this is the first set of books with Phil. All right, so uh, these books sold within a day from apart from each other. First, we have Conan the Barbarian, first appearance of Red Sonia in CGC 8.0, sold for three fifty dollars uh, in auction. The day after, DC Comics presents 47 CGC 8.0, sold for a best offer of two seventy five. dollars It's the first appearance of He-Man and Skeletor. Who wants to go first? I'll take this one. I was at a show recently, and I, you know, I don't know why this book is so confusing to people. Uh, Conan twenty three versus twenty four. I think it's like you know the the Hulk one eighty one eighty one, but it's it's not in terms of what's in the guts. It's just the cover that. People go after 24 more. So 23 is less sought after, in my opinion, just because of people not knowing what's in the guts. He-Man, I mean, this this book is just going to keep going up at this point. We're banking on, you know, Red Sonia. we got a movie coming. Supposedly, uh, it'll get made. He-Man is just going to be done deal for eternity in terms of comic collectors, nostalgia collectors. That's the easy win. What do you Which think, Joe? Picking? I guess I'm next. Now, if if I'm buying as for for my PC, man, I probably I'd probably pick up the Conan the Barbarian. It's hard for me because I already have the DC Comics Presents 47. So I don't have the the Red Sonia, and I mean with the movie spec coming out and that actress playing her, I mean that book is going to heat up even more. I mean I, yeah. Will Will He Man continue to go up? Yeah, but I think don't you think the ceiling is a little bit bigger for for uh, for Red Sonia? I mean that, that's kind of my take on it. I, I guess I'll go with the Conan the Barbarian 23 final answer. Okay. This one I, I thought I had the I thought I had the answer. I'm really I really gotta think about this one. Okay. I would have to say since Con, since, since Conan 23 is older, I think I might have to go with uh, Conan 23. Uh especially in, in an eight, because there's no way I would want a DC Comics presents forty-seven in an eight .0. That doesn't that doesn't appeal to me. But a Conan twenty-three, I believe. What year is that? It's like that's, that's mid late seventies, I think. Okay, so you know, nice mid Bronze Age book in an eight. I'm I'm going with that. I'm going with uh, Conan twenty-three. All right, cool. What do you think, Sean? All right, so obviously you're asking the uh, asking the guy with a wall of He-Man behind him. 
uh, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, although someone's being uh, replaced. Look, I mean, this is this is a summer he's uh, summer he man. We're gonna get the Kevin Smith uh, July thirteenth. We've already got the cover. The covers are starting to come out, so they got the Sinkevich variant for number two, and Dave Wilkins just absolutely crushing it for 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 uh, for his for his cover for number two for the prequel to the Kevin uh, Kevin Smith Netflix show. I think it's just uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, summer He Man here building up with the comics, building up with everything else. Like Carter brought up, I do like that the um, Conan's a little older. The DCP is a newsstand. I don't know. I just I just think that the DCP is just gonna keep going up. Um, right right now, um, the Conan hype uh, is is a little bit more immediate. It's it's tougher to find an eight zero of that than it is the DCP. I might take the Conan short term. I take the DCP forty seven uh, long term, uh, definitely. Uh, so if we're gonna go, we're gonna go by that, if I'm gonna go by that, I'll I'll take the DCP forty seven. All right, Rich, what do you think? I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is the the old slab premium. So we might have a possible bump there. Second thing that comes to mind is DC Comics is down right now. You know, it's, um, I mean, even with news, it, it, I mean, investors are not, well, at least the majority of the community is not getting be- behind DC. So let's say their DC comics are in a lull. So I think the ceiling could be much higher for a, a DC comic, especially a high grade newsstand. I don't know if there's any more meat on the bone with the new um, 80 label. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't really care about raised a red Sonia. Um, I do like Conan. I, I I'm, I'm a big Conan fan, but I really don't care about red Sonia. I think this that price is partially a, a inflated market slash FOMO price with the premium old label possible bump there. Um, and I think that the he man, um, the DCP 47 uh, newsstand, long term has the has the legs especially you know um with the nostalgic and you know i um going to target the other day i noticed the skeletor castles out now the new skeletor castle which is basically this it's like a prototype of the old one so yeah uh, uh, final answer is uh, the dcp 47 newsstand the only thing that scares me about the conan is the production company um so shout out to Lucas. Uh, I believe it's Mike. Mike Pike Productions is what's producing the Red Sonja and Vampirilla books, um, or into into like live action movies. So you know, that's a rel- I, I would say that's probably a relatively new company considering their stock is like such a low price. And then with DC, uh, what the Discovery Channel is doing a streaming service and. They've already said they're going to spend like much more money on their production value for everything to like be competitive in today's market. So I'm going to have to go with the the DC presents number 47. So I recall um, seeing Sean at Baltimore Comic Con, um, and I, I think I tried to sell him a, a Conan 24 for like 125 bucks in like BF. <laughs> <laughs> he passed on it, but it was it was the right decision at that time. Not you know? dude, it was a it was a nine zero with brown pages. It was it was a higher grade, but it was beat. But it was it had it had it honestly had cream pages. Damn, so, he's got a good yeah. memory. Damn, <laughs> the dreaded cream pages. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't even think it was a bad price. I said, "Shit, I wish I had it now." Yeah, um, well, if you only knew what we knew before, right? Now I was mean, it twenty three or twenty four? I think it was a uh, twenty four. I had okay. up on the wall. Yeah, still, I almost valued those books equally. Uh, I I do agree. One's like the first appearance, but the market seems to like uh, sort of like the covers, and this is definitely first appearance because I just I just flipped through one. But yeah, yeah, like I think as people as this book like gets more and more like out there um the debate on 23 and 24 gets more visible 
I've talked to people and they really think it's really like 23 is first full red yeah, stone. Yeah. There's, there's no debate on it. It's not debatable. Full. Yeah. It's what do you want as a collector? Yeah. There's debate. Well, I mean, there's 24 has first full on, on the CGC label, right? Is that correct? Like I, I saw that the other day. I couldn't tell you. It wouldn't be the on, first time they were wrong. On on what? 20, 24 says first full? <laughs> yeah, 24 says first full, I believe. You all have really, really good arguments. Like, Rich, like, for sure. 47 has humongous, tremendous, like, long-term value. And then the 23 is a quick short-term. Um, or it could be a long-term. Uh, for me, I'd like to just want to go for the home run. Um, people kind of question Hannah John Kamen's um, fit for Red Sonia. She's a good actress. Uh, I'm really surprised um, that Mike the Pike Productions was able to secure her. So I'd go for the home run. Uh, female, female prop, like a female-led property. The books like in dynamite like the like the variants always sell like you, no one really reads a book i'm not sure maybe they do if you read if, you, if anyone in the comments can <laughs> chime in on the on the dynamite stories because i heard this mike the pike production movie is based off the dynamite comics so maybe i'm just gonna shoot for the moon close my eyes swing the pinata and hopefully i <laughs> I, I get a slam dunk, you know? So, oh. Do it. Do it. Yeah, um, I'm picking a Conan 23, CGC 80, just going for the home run shot, and I don't think it's that expensive. So, why not take a chance? Uh, I mean, and you, you've got two, I mean, two first appearance on, on the cover. I mean, they threw, they, because of the DCP series, they, you know, they've got Superman in there. <clears throat> but um, I mean, you literally got the the first appearance of uh, of Superman. I mean, uh, sorry, of Superman, of of He Man, of Skeletor with Grayskull in the background. Um, it just did. It, I mean, it says attorney on the cover. Um, this is. I mean, it's 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 the first comic. This is this is it. This is. I mean, this is the champ. Um, <laughs> this this is the champ of Masters of the Universe, and that's. And you, you want to talk about crossover appeal, anything like that, you know. And like Rich said, the, the the toys are still in the stores, and they're and they come out with more and more crossover with WWE. They don't spend the money to make that and make all those toys without, uh, you know, without having more and more plans, you know. So like, I, I I I mean, guess kids are still playing with this stuff. Uh, I don't know. I just think as as a collector, um, that I mean that's 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 going to be a book any of the Masters of the Universe comic collectors are are going to want and. With more and more people joining the ranks of, of comic collectors, <clears throat> you know, not that toys and comics are that far off from each other, like say cards and comics are. I mean, it just you—you you really have a uh, like an an iconic book, and I guess two seventy-five doesn't sound terrible for very fine, um, because uh, I just I don't know how many of those are getting pulled untouched uh, anymore out of the back bins to get and get any more nine point eights out of there, so. I'm changing my. I'm changing, know, my any, pick. I'm changing my pick. No, if <laughs> if anything, I I'll tell you what, Sean. Would you have, I mean, listed something at three forty nine, and then taken two seventy five? I mean, on that book. Try yeah, probably. I mean, I, mean, I probably not. Yeah, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't. Yeah, have. not on not on not on a book that's going into the summer like that. They just got a new. Yeah. The new the new Dark Horse series announced things like that. You know, you're gonna get people. People are gonna get hyped over. Um, it's it looks like it's gonna be it's it's a prequel. It's gonna have a lot of backstory. I actually think that this series is gonna be sought over. Or uh, if you if you saw the uh, the Dave Wilkins cover for number two, I mean, it's just, it it it's insanity. It's it's literal insanity. And I know it's like whatever. Um, I mean, I'm a Wilkins fan. There's couple Wilkins things there and and I was totally I was actually going through books um it was a it was a Canadian listing so they they haven't been getting shipments across the border so that was they had to take what really I didn't know that mm. all right yeah so I'm gonna change the... my pick I'm gonna change my pick <laughs> no, this, no uh, changing. <laughs> before this hits the air we gotta move on <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, Yuri said final answer, so I'm going to go with that. No, because no, I got to look at it like, what if I'm at a con, right? And I got to pick, and my buddy pulls me aside and says what Sean said. He said, dude, don't buy that shit. He said, they're going to have all this shit going on in the summertime. I said, you know what? You're right. Okay, we're going to go with uh, uh, DC Comics Presents 47. Put that one back, you know? All right, yeah, I mean, be a lot of change our picks. <laughs> <laughs> no refunds. <laughs> so, yeah. So for our next two books, uh, this is from Mighty Mel V. We have Marvel Star Wars Canaan, The Last Padwin, number six at a 9.8, ended at $820. And we have Eternals, number one, at a 9.6 for $836. Wow, this is... A crazy comparison. <laughs> I love this one. I love this one. Um, my my personal opinion, which is not what the market has equated to, is that Canon Six is is not the first Sabine Wren. She is in number one, but it's you know it's the back of her head. You know it's her, etc. She's on the cover of Six. Understand? Uh, Eternals number one. This movie, in my opinion, looks great in terms of a cinematic experience. It doesn't look like a Marvel movie, but that doesn't mean that people aren't going to love it. I got to go with with Canon if I'm going for the flip. Uh, Eternals, I think this is a great price for that. In terms of the seller value, I think it's hitting its peak soon. I'm going with Canon. Yeah, I'm going Kanan also, 9.8. Um, man, there's, I, I think the Kanan book has so much more upside. And I don't know. Yeah, you talk about an easy flip. You you look at 38 bidders on, on that book. I mean, you know, it's the Eternals. I mean, at a 9.6 seems like a, a, but I just don't like, I don't see myself making any much more money on that. If I bought it, because my intention would be to flip it. But yeah, I go with the Canon final answer. Yeah, this one seems pretty easy to me. What's interesting is that that Eternals one sold right before what, like a couple of days before the trailer came out. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, that being said, I'm still going with Canon just because uh, I can't. I I legitimately can't stand that Eternals cover. Yeah, it looks like it looks ugly, dude. Yeah, yeah. I know we uh, talked about this on uh, Tales from the Flip Side on Monday. I'm just like, I don't know, Solo Jack Kirby creations like with the exception of like a handful of characters he's just kind of i don't know he's just he's just a little too out there for me <laughs> he needs stan <laughs> <laughs> see i okay so i don't uh i'm i'm not as huge as the on on the star wars spec uh unfortunately like a whole lot of people in the same boat as me i ignored a lot of free money over the years uh, so only now refinding and the only way I'm making any money is by grading this stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, uh, like Carter said, interesting that it, that it did end, uh, right before the trailer, you know, that dude was like, God damn it. Right. Like he's got, he's got to be, he's got to be so, be, that's, that's like the first thing I saw, uh, Monday morning or whatever it was. So like, that, yeah, that dude is $50 in, he's happy. Yeah, that yeah, it's quite possible. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, you could probably fool some people by uh, since it has a barcode and tell them it's newsstand because um, <laughs> because people aren't uh, anyway. So uh, between the two, um, see, here's here's where you're like a little bit on on the thin ice because like I can see. Um, right, sort of leading up to this movie or uh, like good reviews from Europe or something at Eternals, uh, and, you know, 9-6 going like 1500 or something like that. At the same time, with these modern first appearances and like the, the Star Wars crossovers and blah, 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 
these modern first appearances, um, this the the Canaan could all of a sudden be a twenty five hundred dollar book in like two two bidding wars from now. So um, you could you could win or lose, I guess, on on either of these ones. But uh, because I think uh, it can go it can go further because we've just proved that with uh, every single book that there is. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Star Wars uh, out of these two. I saw I saw the trailer for Eternals. I'll be honest with you, I wasn't very excited, but I thought John just described it perfect. It does look like a perfect cinematic uh, experience. It should be at the Omnimax in Vegas. Remember that place, at Caesar's Palace. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, I didn't see. I think I might have saw a glimpse of Kit Harrington, but I didn't see the Black Knight at all. And I thought um, Jim Chan and him were were like the the two that had the love interest, and then all of a sudden it was end up in the according to the trailer, it's his uh, it's his Game of Thrones brother <laughs> that's trying to hook up with her or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, back to the books. Um, Sean made a really really good point when he said that literally you know with especially with these modern keys and character on cover nine eights i mean two three auctions later next thing you know it's it's two and a half three times the you know the fmv and now you're talking about a twenty five hundred dollar book and the eternals book um first of all there's a ton of copies it's not even the best it it's not even the best copy you want um uh, per se, because you you you, you want to look for that 30, 30 cent price variant, um, but uh, yeah, ton of copies. I'm not really stoked on the Jack Kirby uh, alone kind of thing either. I think he does need Stan and and Dick go with them. Um, and on top of that, uh, you know, I just think that I just think Star Wars just has such a high ceiling, and I mean, people have been waiting for these these Canaan books and they just continue going up and up and up and the Eternals FMV has just been kind of floating up and down around the same you know this is the highest I've seen it so far but yeah so final answer is uh, Star Wars Canaan the last paddle one number six nine eight so I'm going Eternals so um, this Canaan six um, for me, that's that second appearance of Sabine in comic book format. You got the Lego book that some people don't know about that came out before. That is a comic book, and it has all the characters of Rebels in there. Then you have uh, the Le the Rebels magazine book, and there's a comic book in there. It's a full comic book story. Then Kanan 1 is labeled by CGC as first appearance of the whole crew what makes me hesitant about getting into canon 6 although it is a really beautiful cover um it is the first full right if we're going by comic book format with cgc it it's a full story sabine's all throughout the book also but she's also all throughout the book in comic book art in the magazine so it's like when people go and lobby for a first appearance to appear on a label, they're going to have to type, take in all the information. So this book, number six, is going to have to go against the Lego book, and it's also going to have to go against the magazine. So do I really want to take a chance at that at $820 in an auction? It makes me really, really hesitant because 800 is a lot of money. Um, I agree with Sean that a Bronze Age 9-6 book with tons of spec potential, I mean, today that's $1,500, you know, and buy it now. So I like the legs on the Eternals 1. Um, yeah, I would have to go with Eternals 1. Um, if it was another book, maybe I would... I would kind of be a little more towards the Star Wars because Dave Fioni just got a promotion and that just 
for sure guarantees that we're going to see Sabine in maybe even more than one project. Um, we're going to see the use of all of his characters, a lot of his original characters. So Eternals 1, CGC 9-6, pray and hope that the movie's good and more more stories come out of it for and different projects come out of that um that project so eternals one cgc 96 final answer depending on what i mean i don't even know what the plot is but based on all the reports that, that i've seen if jim uh chan ends up being like with with black knight the character and she's the one moving on eternals one might not even be the book it might end up being eternals three that's 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 a really good point. So, um, so I stayed up all night to catch the premiere of Bad Batch, and like as soon as I saw that the beginning part, um, I think I was chatting with Phil, and I was like, I was like, I'm buying a a, a Star Wars canon number one like right now, like before everyone wakes up and catches catches this what while the price is low. Uh, so I did that. And, you know, since I did that, you know, I might as well get a six to go with that. You know, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like they're going to eventually do something like either Canon, you know, um, I don't really care about Eternals personally, but it, yeah, that's just my personal opinion on this one. So, so let me round this out. Uh, <laughs> Canon six, 374, I think, uh, 98, 704 graded, Eternals, 1359, 96, 6,846 graded. I, I don't think it's, it would take a novice comic collector to understand that Eternals 1 has been graded way, way more times. There's many more copies out there. Does that mean that it's less important? No, not at all. We've seen this time over time. So I think you have to decide what's more important in terms of longevity to Marvel Comics and the lore of both properties. Yeah, there's 1,337 96s in, in Eternals compared to 546 98s. So. Uh, and you gotta think, man. Like, how many? Uh, how many of those have been graded in the last year? Two thirds of them. You know, uh, absolutely. I, yeah, the last eighteen yeah. months, absolutely. Yeah. So, and yeah, and I don't, I don't blame people. Um, so, yeah, it is what it is. I never bothered to grade any eternal stuff. Um, found, found, found stacks of it on, um, not stacks of it. Found a good amount on Monday. I happened to pull out my Eternals box. Uh, like the day before the, the day before the trailer, so um, I still haven't listened to that crap yet. But maybe tomorrow. It, you know, you know what that book reminds me of. You remember when everybody was going crazy for all the vintage Guardians of the Galaxy junk, and then it turned out yeah. that it was uh, the more modern stuff that the Annihilation yeah, Conquest. This, yeah, yeah. So I mean, that kind of just. I look at that junky cover, and, and it just reminds me of that junky Guardians of the Galaxy cover. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I see what you're saying. It was, it, yeah, it was really nice that the 2008 series was what what was chosen, and they they still promised Warlock, and we still haven't seen that gold bastard once yet. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, the you know, there's rumors that no, nah, there's rumors that uh, baby Thanos or. Yeah, or uh, a teenage yeah. Thanos or Thanos going to the prom is 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 going to come out in that. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how I've, it goes. It'd have been nice if they would have stuck. If, if Thanos, Thanos would have stuck his head out. Yeah. What's that? I I made a rumor on my own. It's Thane. Oh, there we go. It's Thane. Nice. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Well, like, I as you all know, it. like, before this whole boom, right, for, like, vintage comics, like, Eternals were, like, the super low-hanging fruit. Like, you can buy them cheap everywhere for, like, the last few years. We all know, saw this coming, so, I mean, it's really, 
I can I can see how all of you are like really hesitant to get the nine six Eternals versus the potential of yeah. in the high ceiling of the Sabine Ren in uh in six. And it, it, it is a key. I'm not I'm not saying it is not the key, but there's risk. Yeah, I'm, I, and uh, that's why I sort of brought it up. I really, I really think that maybe, like honestly, if someone walked in right now and said, "You get, you get one of these," um, I, there's a good chance that I might, I, because I, I do think eight thirty six is going to be the uh, very, very low end of what that thing's going to sell for leading into the movie. I, I do have uh, faith in Marvel and their fans. Um, they're actually not quite as, you know. Uh, the Star Wars fans get let down way more easily than Marvel fans. That's that, that that's that's just a thing. So uh, I honestly, I mean, I I picked the uh, I picked Canon here, but like definitely think I could I could see getting fifteen hundred out of it, and then not really worried about it uh, anymore in life. <laughs> so yeah, you, you, you know what if the uh, what if the Eternals is is hot garbage, dude. I mean, you got another Inhumans. I remember everybody buying up in first appearance of Inhumans, and and that just, you know, just they, they might. Yeah, they made a lot of mistakes with with Inhumans. They they, they I don't know. They overvalued it, trying to launch it in a movie theater for the first episode and all that. Um, I mean, I think the tickets were free for wherever they were doing yeah. that. But um, yeah. Um, I know what you mean. I, I just I wouldn't. I don't see a significant bomb. They think they're onto something. Um, they're they're definitely you know choosing uh, choosing uh, you know Angelina Jolie and uh, you know the the Stark brothers. You know they they figure they're going to get the fans out to to see the to see it all, and they're going to tie it in some somehow. Um, I don't know. Yeah, Marvel. Some movies are better than others, obviously, because that's how movies work. But none of them were such absolute shit that you just didn't want to watch them. That's what that, you know. That's what that's what that's what it seemed like to me. So I think I think they know what they're doing. Uh, they've been working on it out of it out of their home studios <laughs> for a while, and uh, I, I just assume that it's going to be um, good enough. You know, I don't expect another uh, take you by surprise Guardians of the Galaxy or anything like that. I, I just don't. That that's that was such a you know rare rare perfect storm when we're wondering how to a tree and a tree and a raccoon are going to work out and they just freaking did so all right so wait, do our, we got a guardians book up next nope so our next <laughs> set of books are brought to you by mercenite so I'll let him introduce the first set okay Ooh. so we've got uh the clone wars uh one through twelve and then we have uh, something that's killed in the children, 1 through 15. So the Star Wars set is, what, 13, 8, 3. And something, the kill something is killing the children, uh, 1 through 15, is 15, 75. Hmm. What say I, you I like this a lot. And then in the killing the children says that they're guaranteeing 9.8. Plus, plus. I mean, probably only a few tens, but <laughs> yeah, <right. you> know. <laughs> oh, they were they were never taken out of the original bag and board. Never yeah, read, never taken out original bag and board. So yep. let's start with you from the bottom up. All right, yeah, so I totally believe it. Yeah, <laughs> the, clone, the Clone Wars set. So like. A lot of people don't know this, but like after issue two or three, the print run gets dramatically lower. I think like twelve ends, like issue twelve ends at like twelve thousand or eight thousand, twelve thousand print run. Um, but verse something is killing the children. That that set from one through fifteen has way more keys. Okay. You have to pretty much bank on number one hitting a nine eight to really, really like okay, all right. Well, maybe I can flip it for three Gs if I get a nine eight. But it's tough with the dark horse books. It's going to be easier with the newer the newer boom books. 
you just need to get the the issue one. If you get like a nine six, maybe later in a nine six will be like eight hundred bucks or something, and then you just make up the room on the other keys on the other key books and and something that's killing the children. That's that's live action. That's mainstream. So I go with the hot new stuff. I, I'm a Star Wars guy, but I go with uh, something is killing the children set at 1575. I've been pressing a lot of uh, Dark Horse Star Wars books the last four, three, four months. And I, I've been uh, pressing a lot of something is killing the children for myself for submissions. And if there's no color breaks with that, thick card stock um i mean the chances are you know you should be able to pull off a 9a at least that's that's what i'm seeing if there's a color break you're, there's there's no chance so that's you know with the with the star wars the dark Wars stuff the paper is like super cheap um and it's super flat too i i, I don't i don't know but anyways um, i don't really um know a lot about star wars the clone wars that that set besides I've pressed this that whole set, um, but I've read every single one of these issues of something's killing children multiple times, and um, I have that whole run, all first prints, and I have all the variants that were produced by Boom Studios. Um, n just a couple late printings, but nothing nothing too exciting. But uh, long story short. Um, uh, it feels right. There are a lot more keys, especially one, one through nine. Well, let's see. Yeah, there are a lot more keys, I would guess. And, um, a lot of, you know, it's not out there. It's not on an app. It's not really on any websites besides, you know, CBSI. But, um, I also think something is killing the children, um, is right now is not as organic as Star Wars Clone Wars, A, because there's just so many fans outside of regular comic collectors. And then your you're people that are just getting into, not Star Wars, but Star Wars Dark Horse books added into that, compared to something that's killing the children. I think that is, and don't get me wrong, I, I love it. I love t uh, Tiny Antinian. You know, I love this story. I love Erica Slaughter. I love every character in this book. This, order st george but i do honestly think this is a this this number this 1600 hundred dollar number uh shipped is a product of the right now the inflated market and some fomo going on here i think that i think that number is going to cool down um unless we get some like really updated like you know news with some dates for production and stuff then that would change my 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 uh, scenario and point but yeah i mean um for me pc wise i would go star wars clone wars 1 through 12 um long term same short term um something is killing the children for the for the quick flip final answer and hey uh, our listeners if if i'm wrong or i'm an idiot comment let me know <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I'm actually, I'm, I'm pretty much what Rich said is a, is the same deal. <clears throat> um, only pressed a little bit of the Clone Wars, but uh, you know the, the, the it's an it's an easy press. The first few issues, especially something Kill the Children, I mean that that's tough. If those things got a dent, you're you're pretty much screwed. So for this this dude to call this thing a nine eight set, um. Yeah, what was, was I saying earlier about? Or I don't know. Was I saying it on air about people not taking books out of the bag and looking at the back? Because you're mm -hmm. definitely gonna have to do that with who the set is. And I'm I'm not judging the seller because I, I don't know who it is or anything like that. Um, you know, and there's no way you know one through fifteen he's gonna have enough uh, pictures for the seller to judge. So I could see I could see a return coming on these. <laughs> <laughs> just 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 being on just being honest here. Uh, yeah, and you know, uh, guaranteeing nine eight raws is not the smartest thing to do, by the way, especially when it's for 15 for 15 books. But, um, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, like we said, I, I think, I think short term, 
Uh, we're going to go with our newest uh, comic acronym of uh, SIKTC. Um, I think if, if you had to ask me uh, which, which one of these five years from now uh, I want, I don't, I don't think I, would, I, I wouldn't stray from the, from the Clone Wars set here. That's just too, too big of an appeal to too many people with too many things going on. Um, <clears throat> that being said, uh, that they are raw, uh, I would try to inquire. <clears throat> I wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't expect 12 9 8s uh, any more than I would expect 15 9 8s on either of these listings. But, you know, I, I, would, I would have to take a look um, to, try to, to try to get uh, a decent gauge on what the grades might be in this set. De- definitely, you know, on, on that set, you're not expecting all the 9 8s. But um, to, to, to get all near mint books, I think that, that would be good. Um, the stuff that if they were all in a back bin for two ninety nine and got dug through for eight years in a row, um, I'm probably going with something's killing the children there. Uh, but uh, assuming it's a it's a near mint set or, or close to it, uh, I go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Star Wars for for the long term here. Hey Sean, let me ask you a quick scenario. So, let's say you you're the buyer on this something's killing the children in that lot. And they all come back uh, nine two to nine six, except number one comes back nine nine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd be completely nice. content. Well, <laughs> nice. Yeah, n- n- number yeah, number one nine nine. Uh, what, what do you guys think? What do you think number number one nine nine would would sell for? Probably <sighs> probably 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 uh, probably thirty five hundred four grand something like that. Yeah, like today, I, if it's sold today. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there is one or not. I didn't. I didn't look it up. But I, I don't think there. I think. I think four grand's a good. Yeah, number. I was going to say four or five grand. Yeah, yeah, good, good stuff. And, and you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder on that. Yeah, nine nine would be great. But uh, I, yeah, I'd, I'd take. I'd, I'd take Star Wars as long as the grades are, is as long as they're you know in the nines, basically. Okay, um, Carter, do you, do you want to go last since this is yours? Honestly, I, I don't think my opinion is, will sway anybody, because uh, because I, I I'm still <laughs> trying to I'm still trying to work it out in my head which one I want. I'll say you guys that press books is something something school and children it, are these unpressable? Uh, the number one no. is um like you can press them all like you can help them all, mm-hmm. but like the they're not they're not the. T- Especially the first, I noticed they got a little. The the paper seemed to get softer. They don't. They're not. They don't like moisture, <laughs> so mm, it makes the job right. it makes the job harder. He, uh, he doesn't. Well, yeah. I'm pre- I'm I'm pressing number four second print right now, and it had two pretty big dents on the on the back spine with color break uh, under an eighth of an inch. But uh, and I was like freaked out because I mean that raw that book's like three hundred fifty bucks. So um long story short i went with 110 card stock under covers and i usually i mean i'm usually like 60 60 pound uh paper stock or card stock under covers um but the thing is is that the 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 issue i can see is is depending on how deep the dent is um you'd have to use localized humidity and not too heavy card stock because if you end up using heavier than 110 then you're going to get that line so yeah, yeah, these are pressable, but, but you you don't want to overdo it. So less is more, definitely mm-hmm. with something with with these covers. Okay. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> I'm thinking just off the top of my head that the the main book uh, for the Clone Wars is number one, and then kind of the rest of them are maybe you know just whatever. Uh, something is killing the children. The main books are one and five. If we're talking strictly first prints, um, man. I, see, again, I'm still trying to work it out. Which one I want? Now, luckily, I was able to get like every single one of these books for cover price. Hallelujah. <laughs> but um, if I was like, if I if I didn't have any, and I'm buying. God, you know what? I would say for the price, I would say for the price, I would go with Clone Wars and try to find 
like maybe a cheaper something that's going the children's set. But I don't know. Each each issue just keeps going up, 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 and up. But man, I would. I'm thinking. Hmm, man, I'm I'm really. Okay, I'm thinking Clone Wars. I'm, I'm okay. I'm gonna go with Clone Wars. Set final answer. Even though I really do like uh, something's going to the children. I, I guess it's me, right? So yes, it, it it's uh, all first prints, flawless, near mint, nine eight plus. But you know, there's no fire uh, fire emoji, Sean. So I don't know yeah. whether to believe this listing or not. You know, <laughs> that's a good that's a, that's a I, good point, man. Yeah, <laughs> no no fire <laughs> emoji, man. I think that seller's lying. You know, no bo- no boom I, pow or whatever that was. Yeah, called. dude. Yeah, uh, doesn't say yeah you, you look at this. <laughs> I mean, you look at one through 15, you break them up. I mean, can you double your money, you know? And can you double your money if uh, you slab them? And I, I think both lots, I mean, you could uh, come pretty close. I, I, I mean, it's a coin flip, but I think there's a lot more Star Wars fans right now then something is killing the children and if if i wanted to double my money uh pretty quickly you know that's assuming that i get a nine eight in a number one <sighs> yeah i mean if it's Man. nine eight and one like you're you're right isn't 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 number one close to 1500 by itself in a nine eight so it's more than that the children I don't know. Killing the killing the children? Yeah, over yeah, two that's... grand, I think. No, uh, one was over... is... I thought it was twenty two hundred last time I checked. Oh yeah, yeah. boy, I I don't, I don't know what the highest is right now, but I, I thought it was like fifteen hundred was like the highest. I oh, think okay. it got to like sixteen, maybe. Okay, maybe a little more than that. Hold on, I'm looking this up. You know, it's interesting that the third party um, grading companies have not labeled these characters yet in this in this book. I mean, this is the the hottest series I've seen since. I mean, I, I can't even dead. think since Walking Dead and since in Marvel Walking Dead. and, and Mar- yeah. uh, with this with this little print run and and with Marvel, I guess you could say uh, Thanos thirteen through seventeen. And, um, you know, I mean, they haven't labeled the characters yet. You got in the first one, in the first issue, you got Erica, and then you have first cameo of Octo. And then number two, you have first full Octo, and then you have um, other characters. Uh, you got uh, in six, you got the first full or, or a first cover and first full of uh, Order of St. George. And then all the way up to like, you know, 13, 14, and there's, and there's no labels yet. I, I think that's inter- interesting. I wonder if that's going to change once we get more solid uh, production dates and news. Hopefully I, it does. I think if you look up something is killing the, the children in the CGC census, they notate like on issue one, like first appearance of Erica Slaughter. But I don't think they print it on the label yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They usually do that. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's not on the label yet. Yeah. And it's <clears throat> there was okay. There was a. It looks like so this this book sells a lot. <clears throat> so yeah, one hit twenty one hundred, and oh, there wow. was one at sixteen hundred. Uh, the twenty one hundred was May third, but I mean the last um, in reverse from newest uh, backwards just for the last week. 1125, 1000, 1150, 1200, 1300, 1350, 1200, 1200, 860, 1400. So, you're, yeah, sort of all over the place. But um, to me, if I was just gauging about what I'm looking at right there, I'd, I'd, I'd call it 13 or 1400. And that 21 is, I mean, it's just a mega outlier on this thing, you know. Uh, I, I, and I think that's just, yeah. The, that that seller probably caught yeah, it at we, the right we time. Can't go by that. I mean, yeah, that's not that's just a mega outlier. Like my, in my head, yeah. I mean, the the ninety days eight eighty two, but that's 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 yeah. not accurate either, because there's been so many copies sold in in the last. Well, yeah. Shit. If that if that one one sells every other day. So. If that one is a nine eight, sure. But if that one Clone Wars is a nine eight, I'm taking that and and at at. Face value, I'm taking Clone Wars for a long term. 
quick and easy answer. Yeah. Well, I, I want to say even on the Star Wars, Clone Wars number one, even if it's at a 9.6, I want to say it still sells for like, what, 1,500? And oh damn! You know, yeah, oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, and so we already know that we're getting a Soka series for Disney Plus, and so it's going to draw right. even more. Like as soon as it gets closer to like actually seeing trailers and all that, and don't forget, I think I believe in issue seven in the Clone Wars is the first appearance of uh, Commander Wolf in the Dark Horse series. Is that right? Yeah, number uh number seven, um number six, it's a possible, but definitively if you had to pick one it'd be seven right now. Right. And then Captain Rex also appears in issue one on top yeah, of that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Which so I mean I, 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 yeah. I, I think number two is undervalued, you know. Yeah, it's it's a third appearance of Ahsoka, but it's a third appearance of uh, a key character. So I mean, I even I, I think number two has a lot of upside, and it's a great cover also. Mm. Um, and then um, yeah, one thing uh, I do, yeah. oh, okay. and one thing no, I, I mean, I, I I love something is killing children. Like I'm sure you you all know that. Uh, issue twelve had the printing damage done to it, where they had to recall it. So I don't know how, if it's all first prints and they picked it up every week or whatever for, for whatever price. I. You know, we can't guarantee that if you didn't look inside issue twelve. Um, so that's that's one thing that scares me about the something is killing there's, children. There's multiple in one to fifteen. There's more keys than just two. Mel V has covered them. I mean, there's it's a great it's, story. It's one, one two six. Um, one two. And sorry, John. One two six uh, nine thirteen. And uh, you know, maybe seven, too. maybe seven too. I mean, Five, I'm, ten, taking away, 11, I'm taking two. away, I'm taking away, I'm taking away cover appearances. I'm just talking about in the guts. I think it was six or seven. Uh, Golden Dragon. Yeah. So, uh, in the perspective, if I don't have either or, I, I think I'm gonna have to go with my guts and still go with the Star Wars. I mean. I know when Carter sent me this, like I was like, I was like, oh cool. Carter's like messaging me like some ideas for dealer flip side. I was like, I was like, oh man, I don't even know which one I would pick. Like, you know, and then you know, now we're filming. Did you get like celebrity envy? Is that what you're saying? No, no, I was just like kind of like, I don't know which one I'm gonna pick, man. Like, and he's like, I don't know either. (laughs) (laughs) So all right. So uh, Star Wars is gonna be my final answer. Let's go on to the next set. Oof. Oof. Oh, boy. I'm I'm expecting (laughs) uh, vintage comics and toys to to kill it here. Don't let me down, Phil. (laughs) Oh, you make me go first on this one? Absolutely. Uh, So we've got um, Amazing Spider-Man number 31. Uh, CGC 8.5 for $2,049. And Journey into Mystery, number 84, CGC 4.5 for $2,401. Okay. I'm going last. I'm going last. (laughs) I'll I'll go first. I mean, the Spider-Man is the easier book to find. Journey into Mystery. Good luck finding that. I've I've seen one recently. This is a no-brainer. Journey into Mystery. Done deal. Uh, We know what's coming. Jane Foster. Gwen Stacy, yes. Always be a classic character. Probably be some iteration in the new movie, but I'm going with Journey into Mystery. Uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm... Yeah, I'm with Sleepy Man. Uh, you know what? What attracts me to that one is the the freaking white uh, white pages, dude. Just gonna say that, just man, say that. dude. So like, I I would, you know, I would really be interested. Like if it's if it's white pages, man, it's crackable, and you know, uh, it's it's got some room there. I hate that 
Spider-Man cover. That's one cover I just, man, I don't like it. Uh, but that journey into the mystery with that brown, I mean, it's just it's something about those those early covers, man. They're they're freaking awesome. I got to go with the uh, journey into the mystery '84. Yeah. Final let me, answer. Let me backtrack on this one, real quick. The one thing we we don't talk about that I love hearing you guys talk about is the page quality. It doesn't bother me as much. I mean, the guts are still the same, but I understand having the book be a much higher quality in terms of content through and through uh, cover pages, etc. That is one thing that I really never consider. Yeah, and, and Because uh, the pages will break down over time. So if you've got issues with brown pages, it's already deteriorating. So that's why the white pages is it's, it's a premium, and uh, especially as being at as old as it is, 1962, to have white pages is a lot harder. And, you know, I, I, I think uh, just from the, the book breaking down more, uh, if, if that was a, a off-white cream, uh, you know, that means that book is, has, you know, broken down. Like, white pages, it's still... Hasn't that book is going to last properly. for a little bit. I don't even believe it. Right? No fucking, yeah. No way. No way. It has white pages, dude. Yeah, I was thinking that. Looking at that top corner, especially nah, that dog ear. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. those things are those things are off white, creamed off white. T take your four or five with your white pages and fuck off. <laughs> bullshit. You think so, <laughs> man, but, dude? Nah. I don't nah, think there's dude. white pages either. I Red like page, that. Page, white that page, page, carrot, like, man. That that shit's ar through, that that I shit's arbitrary. The side of the slab. I looked through the side of the slab, and I saw a lot of plastic. So I'll say it's white. <laughs> you know, the only <laughs> thing is, Sean, that it, you know, I mean, could have a tear on the back, and if it w didn't have a tear, could that have been a seven five white pages? So it could be some damage that we can't see just based off of the off of the front of it. You know what I mean? Or, or page color can be some arbitrary bullshit that's just as <laughs> that's just as bullshit as as some of the grades happen to be. Uh, you know, um, I'm 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 saying and this is funny because this is after the guy bringing up cream pages Phil was trying to sell me back in the day, but like, <laughs> <laughs> so there's uh yeah I, I don't know man uh, I, I'm just saying it it's a, dude from going off white off white white to white like that I mean that's a, a I mean, it could be that could be a big leap, you know. Um, that that one doesn't hurt me. Um, I, but the age of that the age of that book, um, I do agree that's a big factor in sale. So uh, nobody pay attention to me when I I tried to ring the bell on like when um, uh, Spider Gwen, uh, however you want to however you want to uh, phrase her, phrase her name there. Um, took off as uh, back to life and as a new Spider-Man or Spider-Woman, however you want to say it. And so I, I kept saying, you know, Amazing Spider-Man 31, why isn't, you know, why isn't this the book? And uh, a few years ago, I still stick by that a few years ago, but nowadays I sort of, I completely understand how people kind of take it on as a, as a completely new character because it pretty much is. Um, they just, you know, a little bit of recycling, um that that book is that book is really tough in high grade uh, anybody knows these these red covers are just extraordinarily difficult um they flaked off they lost their gloss they lost they lost uh, whatever you're gonna have so to me um somehow uh being able to find uh the first uh gwen stacy who is just a big part of spider-man lore from her death to people thinking that's you know the uh different era of comics uh did did or didn't start uh with with uh, spider-man 121 and 122 uh there's just uh so much to, to gwen stacy that's been all part of our comic lives and jane foster uh is his uh 
you know, uh, his his uh, Doctor Tom Blake's little girlfriend over there. The, all of a sudden, they got Natalie Natalie Portman and you know uh, put her on a treadmill. And even though she said, I thought she didn't say she didn't want to be part of the Marvel universe anymore. And they had to use old outtakes to be able to put her in the in the last the uh, uh, the last of the Avengers movies. So. Um, uh, to me, the, I mean, this is this is a great call. I, I understand why the books are the same. I'd love that eighty four to go with my my new eighty three right there, but uh, to to me, um, long term, and because I want to feel vindicated about shit I talked years ago, I would take the thirty one uh, for sure long term. So that that's that's going to be my final answer. But if I, if I was only doing it for, for money right now, I'd, I'd take the 84. But if I had one to just hang on to, I, I really feel like I'd take the, the 31 and 8.5 because that's such a difficult book in a high grade. What do you think, Rich? Um, okay, so first off, um, longevity, character-wise, uh, Journey into Mystery 84 is the book. I mean... It's it's a it's a second Thor appearance, right? The second Thor appearance. Yep. He's on cover. I mean, I would say Chris Hemsworth will probably never be recasted. You know, knock on wood. At least in the next you know few phases, he's probably the most important uh, Avenger. And Man, don't uh, jinx in the it, MCU, bro. don't jinx it. I know, I know. I knocked on wood. I knocked on wood. <laughs> Um, Jane Foster, uh, what's her name? Natalie Portman is freaking, oh, she's my dream person. Mama. Just in general. <laughs> yes. And she's, she's looking good, looking buff. Um, and that's cool and all. Um, but I, I just, you know, as a, as a collector PC or flipping, I just think that the ceiling has not, has not, uh, taking place with journey and mystery 84, especially with, um, you know, first Jane Foster and second Thor appearance to boot. Plus you got the white pages. I know a lot of you don't care about the white pages, but Hey, like Phil, Phil says labels, sell, uh, labels, sell, sell, excuse me. And when something that has a low grade like that is four or five, which most people aren't excited about, even, you know, with vintage, when it has white pages, they at least know that, Hey, um, and if it's truly white pages that the book was taken care of and it's complete, um, inside, you know, and not have to worry about it. So that, that is a, that is a really good quality. Um, with, with when Stacy, here's the thing. And, and we've had these conversations and I've said, and if I'm repeating myself from the hangouts guys, I apologize, but I mean, how many times, uh, have we talked about what's more important? The, you know, original character or the, um, you know, the, the character that is to be, you know, for instance, Norman Osborn or Green Goblin, uh, Eddie Brock or Venom, um, you know, uh, and Gwen Stacy now has, you know, she's, she's Spider Gwen and Spider Gwen in the modern age of key books is basically a grail um, edge of spider verse two. And she, you know, she looks like she's, she's got legs from the animation and possibly live action. Um, you know, so I just think that, um, this isn't the book anymore for, for, uh, Gwen Stacy. And I think that, uh, edge of spider verse two is, so I think this one might, uh, might be seeing its ceiling and possibly could be, uh, possibly could be on a, a downward trend or at least just plateaued. Uh, Sean's right. These red covers, this one and 50 are, I mean, they're, they're tough. They are tough. And an eight five, that's, that, that's huge. But um, I don't care for the cover art. And to be honest with you, um, I think ASM, I think it's 61. It's the first cover of Gwen Stacy is a really undervalued book. It's a cool, really yellow cover. And you can get that book in high grade for seriously a very low fraction of the cost. I think that book would, would be a book I'd rather put money into uh, on a, especially on a budget 
and expect returns on over this one. So final answer, Journey into Mystery 84, Second Thor, First Jane Foster appearance. White Pages. Oh, Mama. Mama. There's Gwen Stacy. So for ASM 31, I've always, not always, but the last couple years, um, look, I've been looking at what's what's meat on the bone, right, for vintage. And 31, I've compared it to the first appearance of Mysterio, which I think is 13. So I think if the ceiling is ASM 13 for first appearance of Gwen Stacy, then in an 8.5, maybe we can get thirty-five to $4,000 in reflip in the future. For the gym, 84. Um, that book has really, really popped a lot recently, this year and last year. Does it get to the impact of gym 85? Uh, prices for first appearance of Loki, like, is crazy i think i think a cgc 4.5 is like five thousand dollars or close to that right now jane foster there's a lot of questions whether she's going to take on the mantle of thor and beyond there is also thor corpse uh for those people who like modern spec so if she does get the hammer for good and chris helmsworth plays on another role that's another question where he fits in i don't think he's going to be thunderstrike you know but and you got beta ray coming in as well too in the future i was saying that um do you, so do you think jane foster um natalie portman or whatever the character in the mcu will become valkyrie like she's doing right now in the comics or is she are are, are you also in the same pocket as champions because she's a part of the champions, right? Jane Foster Thor. I, th I think eventually, eventually, I think they gotta, they gotta milk, they gotta milk the money a little bit. You know what I mean? It's supposed to be a powerful story in, in Thor Four: Love and Thunder. I mean, that what a yeah. strong title that is. That's a ballsy title yeah. for an MCU film. But I also think with the thirty-one, you also have old money buying Ultimate Fallout Four and Edge of Spider Verse Two. But because Journey into Mystery 85 is blowing up so much with the first appearance of Loki, I mean, 84, just following that book, I just got to choose 84 at this time, even at the 4.5, regardless of page quality. So final answer, Jim 84, CGC 4.5. Um, one thing I do want to say is... Uh, isn't uh, on Amazing Spider-Man thirty-one? Isn't it also first appearance of Harry Osborn? Yes. Yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't think anyone mentioned that. Uh, so I, I think, think that's also something mentioned. Old time Amazing Spider-Man characters. So I mean, I, I think that's something to consider too when making this decision, right? No. No. We're past that. We're past that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but personally, I think I would I would pick the uh, first appearance of Gwen and Harry over the uh, journey into mystery. Um, <laughs> just just personal taste, and uh, every copy I've ever looked at for Amazing Spider-Man Thirty One, that you know, like as Sean and and Dollar said, the like the cover is beat. You know, it's an all red cover, and it's hard to get in higher grade. So like an eight five for two K versus a four five, like. It's hard to choose the four or five. Finalize. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, this is one I'm still trying to work out as well. I've got Journey into Mystery. I've got that in a five. Got that in a five zero. And the I think the two or three copies of thirty one that I have, I'm never really all that satisfied with. And. Um, I think I've never come across a really nice high grade copy of 31. And I would have to say much like say Hawkman number four, I'm, 
I think I'm getting used to number 31 and hopefully other collectors can get used to this cover as well. You know what I mean? So, uh, I, 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 and I like, you know, I like the fact that Jane Foster is on the cover of a uh, journey into mystery number, um, 84, but, uh, yeah, I will, uh, Okay, I'm going, and I think for the price, uh, crap. <laughs> See, I'm still trying to work. Like, I, this is my submission. I'm still trying to work it out. Um, ah, man. It's, so you guys are way more thought out than me. But uh, I'm going to go with, uh, I would say for the price and for the condition, even though I'm not a fan of the cover, I'm I, I think I'm coming around to the cover. Uh I'm gonna go with Amazing Spider-Man 31 final answer. All right. And so with the original submission, you actually sent me this, the Journey into Mystery 84 at a 55 that sold for $2,999. Would this mm. would this change anyone's answer? We can just go down the line real quick. Yes, no. Uh, I, I that was my answer anyway. Okay. Uh, that, that's a good point you brought up, Aaron. Um, yeah, because it's like a thousand dollar difference now, right? Yeah, I mean, um, for, for a point and a half. Makes me uh, now that uh, Joe's on uh, or now. Joe. Joe's on the panel. He could probably agree. It makes me makes me want to think. Okay, well, maybe I'm gonna crack that four five, especially with the white pages, because that means that the, if those are truly white pages, then chances are that centerfold is is sturdy. You said there's a tear in it. Was there tape on it on the tear? Was no, it, no, I no. I said there could be. Oh, okay, yeah, because it matches I, the four I, five. On it. I, but but I I pulled it. I think I cheated and I got a closer look at at that. Thor four five, and there's issues with the back of the cover that can be cleaned. I mean, there's some meat on the bone there, baby. You know, I, I wish I, I wish I would have been looking for for that, but you know, I haven't been really, you know, I don't know. I just don't, stuff. I just, I mean, I mean, my very good and close friend Phil. Um, to, I don't mean to disagree with them, but I do. I just don't think it's a good comparison to to compare Gem eighty four and Gem eighty five because Loki is a whole separate situation. I mean, it's it's like you know, it's a it's a, a vintage character who is literally taking off in the MCU compared to you know a well, well, well established character in a second Thor, and then also first appearance of of uh, Jane Foster, who is just getting her legs under her. I, I just don't think it's a, it's a good comparison. So I just think, uh, Jim 84, um, has room to grow. And, but I do agree with Phil in the sense that depending on what they do with the Jane Foster character. And I think that if you are banking on the champions, uh, coming to the MCU or animation or what have you, um, what if or whatever. I'm sure Natalie Portman would do a, the voiceover if it was animation. But yeah, if it's if it's live action, then um, you know I, I think that uh, you would put your money behind the, the Gem 84, and, and and it's got it's got run long term. Loki is just a whole separate situation. I, I mean, do you think? Yeah. I mean, do you think that people are just, uh, I, I think the reason Phil probably brought it up was uh, maybe the completists want um, all three of them together. Maybe. That's maybe good that's point. in yeah. play. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I'm just like, well, Jane Foster, I mean, there could be a lot of legs here. And then Tom Hiddleston, is his time over with Loki? Is he going to transition to... Is there going to be a transition to female Loki for a little bit? I don't know. Just that the Lo the Loki was always the people were hammering the prices on the low grade Gen eighty five for a long time, and it just blew up. And I was just comparing the trajectory 
of both of these books hitting huge strides in the past year. So that's why, and then they're, they're one issue apart, right? And then you got hero spec versus villain spec. People generally have frowned on villain spec, even though how great Loki has been, right? Like, wow, right? Hey, so if Natalie Portman hits her off out of the park, there's a shot that this one could, could really maybe eventually overtake Loki's first appearance over time. I'm not saying it's going to be overnight, but it's going to take some time. If if they use it for a while and going into like fa the, the Valkyries or the champions, like you said, Rich. And Carter also sent me these. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so we've got, so we've got amazing Spider-Man number 129 CGC 9.0 or uh, 38 to seven and a uh, Hulk 180. Uh, CGC 9.0 for three thousand six hundred and five dollars. Wow, I can't believe these two are the same price. Honestly, I mean we're talking same era. Uh, Sold on the same day too. Yeah, I mean these are the the obviously Wolverine is the more popular character, but we get. Punisher, front and center, cover, first appearance. We get uh, Hulk 180, last page, uh, full splash named. I'm taking 129 all day. I mean, is this is this a question? I don't know. You guys discuss. <laughs> Are you discuss amongst yourselves? <laughs> Uh, shit, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just gonna agree with you. Um, one eighty is the catch up book. Say whatever you want to say. Cameo first, blah blah blah. The oldest, the oldest, stupidest argument in the last forty years. One eighty one's the book that, um, that's the answer. I am aware of what the last page of that looks like, and that his name is on there. Um, Spider Man, uh, one twenty nine, is uh, absolutely one of the greatest. Uh, covers in the history of comic books with a uh, with the with an anti-hero who just had a pretty good Netflix run when Shane from The Walking Dead played him and uh, it, yeah he stopped doing people's wives so he could record the Netflix show uh, and uh, it was uh, yeah it, it's pretty great that so that they're uh, you know it's funny that they're both yellow I thought of that before um but uh yeah i mean just yeah. with the with fighting yeah. crosshairs yeah. The gun actually firing you know what i mean uh i just i absolutely love the layout of uh spidey 129 uh hulk 180 completely completely forgettable yeah uh, i'm actually a bigger wendigo fan than hulk fan but uh, i love wendigo i love wendigo you know, it's all about One, 162 so, baby Sasquatch is whatever, man. Whatever, whatever they are, ready, ready, ready to party with Wendigo. Mm -hmm. But, but one, one twenty nine up there, um, just, just absolutely gorgeous. Um, longevity, um, and if you talk about crossover appeal, there's a lot of people that like that that use the Punisher logo, buy Punisher T-shirts, um, do Punisher stuff without uh, without having. Uh, they know that he's a comic book character, but they don't have inklings of him in the comics. Um, so, uh, to me, out of these two, you can't really go wrong. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go Spidey one twenty nine all day. Yeah, I mean this is easy to me. It's ASM one twenty nine as well. Um, First, I have to add something. Oh, so irritating! If if somebody is going to uh, put in the uh, the nine two, the possible bump, they better put it in the second column so they get jack six dollars for putting something stupid on there by eBay. I mean, it, it's it's uh, I can't I can't stand that when it's in the top. But if you're going to pay for it on the bottom, that's fine. Okay, so. Um, Hulk 180 is uh, is a cool book. I've had multiple copies of it. 
Um, I, uh, I've been hearing all these people going crazy over Marvel Comics Presents 72, and I see, see the listings saying First Weapon X and, and all that. I, I'm pretty sure First Weapon X was in this book because I think they refer to him as Weapon X, right? Um, but anyways, um, but yeah, so going back to the ASM 129. Okay, so we haven't had any Punisher news. I mean, we've had some Netflix news once Echo got casted and, and, and you know, and all the theories connecting that continuity to the, the Earth 19999 MCU continuity and what have you. Um, and then we got some rumors recently that, um, you know, Jessica Jones and all of them, except the, the Iron Fist, uh, would would uh, be uh, you know would return except the Iron Fist dude. But um, first of all, I've always wanted ASM 129. I've never been able to get a copy. I think one of the first things I I asked Phil when I met him was, "Hey, uh, Phil, I, I know you go to a lot of shows, and I don't go I don't get out that much. If you ever see an ASM 129, can you pick it up for me?" <laughs> and I think he started laughing at me. But uh, yeah, and then. I, I like the 2004 movie, the Lionsgate movie. I thought it was cool. I thought it was awesome that they did a Lionsgate fa facsimile when they when the movie came out. Um, I thought that was that was pretty awesome. I mean, it's an it's an epic cover. I mean, it, that cover is so sick, you know. And it's it's Marvel. The dude is like a, is is it, like you said, a, like Sean said, a, an antihero, and he's like holding an M16 or AR15 or whatever. I mean, it, it's, I, I love Frank Castle. I love the Punisher. He's been one of my favorite characters. And I, uh, but I, and I've been reading a lot of his stuff. But I'm just going to tell you that that Punisher, if you haven't read it, the Punisher 218, the whatever 225, 226, or whatever, the uh, War Machine armor story arc is. If, it's, in my opinion, is the best Frank Castle story arc. Um, so I'm really hoping that Armor Wars or whoever um, brings Burnthal in and he dons that that War Machine armor. And uh, uh, final answer, ASM 129. That, that, that book has legs. It's going to keep going up. And it, it, the fact that we haven't heard any news or anything with Punisher besides our own speculation and it just continues climbing is it's is a sign right there. So final answer, ASM 129. What do you think, Joe? I, I just think that, um, well, there's no question. It's uh, ASM 129 for me. I mean, a uh, huge Spidey fan. Uh, it's not even close. And uh, I, I have both of these. Uh, but if, if I had to pick to, uh, to get rid of one, it would be the 180 way before the 129 i i think that quite possibly the reason why you haven't heard anything on the punisher is there's been a lot of speculation that he may be just too violent for disney at this at this juncture i mean um you know could be that people are picking it up because they're afraid that he may never be cast again I mean that that's in play with our society these days. Uh, it would be a shame if that shit would ever happen, but it's it's a possibility, man. I mean, I'm just. I mean, I'm not saying that. That's been said. So. Yeah. It could be people are scooping it up because you may not see Punisher comics anymore. Uh, I'm ASM one twenty nine all day long. Yeah, it, pr pr production value with Disney and stuff like that. It's like, you know, yeah. some of us that really enjoy the comics and especially the Netflix and some of us that enjoy violence on TV instead of real life. Um, you know, it's it's a it's probably it's a tight it's a tightrope for us to whether Disney, you know, goes uh, uh, far enough to 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 stop showing certain things, but and not far enough for us. Or do we get to see it at all? And who's going to make good production? You know what I mean. Nobody, nobody wants what, what DC did. So well, on the on the flip side, pun intended. Um, <laughs> you know, they you got you got uh, Seb Sebastian Stan, Winter Soldier. I mean, he's pretty much like the Punisher. I mean, he's you know he's got a vibranium arm and he's got a freaking 
this crazy machine gun and he's, you know, he's taking people out, you know, left and right. I mean, look at infinity war and, and beyond. Um, but, uh, and then who else is a, is a, is a, uh, a shooter in, in the MCU? I don't know. There's a few others, but long story short, what is, uh, Fr- what is Frank Castle right now in modern comedy? Is he still the cosmic ghost writer? Um, is he in Russia right now? Like Soviet? <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay. Um, I guess I would pick the, the contrary to everyone. Uh, I think I would pick the whole quantity. You know, it's been interesting to see that the the price of that book rise over the last like few years. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not here to like start the debate or anything like that, but. <laughs> You know, it, it's an iconic book, you know, and then if you're going to collect, like, the Trinity, go for it, you know, 180 to 182, and then oh, keep yeah, on going with the, with, yeah. Yeah, with the rest of them. Um, so it, it's just crazy to see the price of this book just keep on jumping up and up and up, but, yeah. All right, for uh, me, like, uh, did you make your pick, Aaron? Yeah, so I'm going to go with the Hulk 180. Okay. Yeah, I'm almost almost kind of curious uh, if we had City Limit comics on the the panel tonight and see what which book he would pick. But um, yeah, um, man, it's tough. So Hulk 180, people are speculating that it's going to be a Hulk 181 price next year. Whatever grade it's going to be, it's going to land in the same range. It's just going to chase it. Amazing Spider-Man 129. I mean, it's, it's highly sought out for. Talking about the PR stuff, Disney's been kind of quiet, right? On when there's been a debate about using the skull and, and this and that going yeah. forward for Punisher. They've been quiet. So it means that I guess they're weathering the storm, at least from, from my perspective. John Barenthal has also made comments about the Punisher and how it's somewhat being what he feels what the Punish Punisher character stands for, right? John Barenthal loves the character. Um, my wife got to meet him at a con a couple years ago, uh, and he was dre- kind of like dressed up as the Punisher with a trench coat. He had a Punisher wallet, you know, up on his uh, signing table. <laughs> It was kind of cool, you know, and yeah. he's oh, like, yeah. into beats, mad loud, like just whatever you think. He's just like complete, and he was in persona of Frank Castle. He was talking like Frank Castle when he was meeting fans and stuff. This is really cool. So I think he's still really amped up to be that character. Is he going to show up in Ar- Armor Wars? It's possible. It's, it seems like a really easy story to throw him in. So. That price at thirty eight hundred is really cheap. I think in CGC nine zero. I think I thought I thought this was already like a forty five hundred dollar book in nine zero, but uh, I have to just go with the first undisputed appearance of Punisher in one twenty nine. Final answer. Hey Phil, so like, how long ago did Marvel say like Hulk one eighty was Wolverine's first appearance? Because I think that's what what uh, started really driving this book. That Marvel well, came people, out and said that it's on their like trading cards and shit from like the yeah 90s. yeah I rem- yeah I remember uh, the Wolverine trading card and it said first appearance is Hulk right right yeah. yeah it was like a like a T-shirt that that has his like trade like that trading card of Wolverine and it has the stats on it and the stats say first appearance. Incredible Hulk 180 from Wolverine. Yeah, but it, but also it, uh, that car, uh, that same thing for Hulk 181. It says first appearance. Oh, it does. It says first. Yes, yeah, it's first appearance for both, not first full. But and it's just full. a trading. It's just a trading card. Like an intern could have typed whatever he wanted on there. And <laughs> like, let's be honest, I don't, I don't think there's a debate of which comic book he was in first. It's right. just a, it just it's cameo versus first. It's the oldest freaking comic debate. I mean, what is there like, um, um, Daredevil two hundred five, the Hulk one eighty one ad? Uh, there's a bunch of books that I, I, I literally started buying because they have Hulk one eighty one ads in them, and, and why not? You oh, know? that's a good pick, man. That's a good X, spec. 
X X Men seventy seven is one of other books that says has a has a, a little thing coming up next month. Um, Ghost Rider and it's pre Marvel Spotlight five, and it's at X Men seventy seven. So it's you know a, a, a reprint. I don't know which I don't remember which book it's a reprint of, but it's a reprint of you know a, a, an X Men book from three or four years before when they had the three or four years of of uh, reprints. So there's a bunch of ads for different stuff like that. They've also they've also sold for more money, and I appreciate that. But like at the same time, I'm not willing to call an ad a first appearance. Um, the first the the first full Wolverine is is uh, even though he's named to me is 181. He's on the cover. That's the first full, and 180 is a cameo, and that that's kind of how I define comics. So. Um, Marvel's even done it recently uh, with the. Do y'all remember the promo for uh, House and Powers? Uh, when they do all the profiles of the different characters in, in Wolverine, it says first appearance, uh, Incredible Hulk 180. Yeah, see, that's that's what I was talking about. They just recently came out and said that. So what's the uh, what's the what's the uh, books that have the uh, 181 ad? There's it's the, there's a Thor and a Daredevil book, right? Like Thor, it's Daredevil two hundred five, two hundred five, yeah, and then I think it, there's a there's a Thor book too, that actually has nothing in the guts except that, and it's like it spiked super hard. It's like a hundred dollar book, yeah, like fifty dollar book. Uh, yeah, there's... are you talking the one that has the ad for Hulk one eighty one in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's been a thing for a while. Or one, yeah, it's been a or thing. Is it one hundred five or two hundred five? I thought it was. It's two hundred five. It's two hundred. I think. Uh, is it two? No, oh, yeah. Daredevil. No. It's 100 something. Yeah. Oh, Daredevil. Daredevil. I thought you said. Okay. Daredevil. Yeah. Daredevil. 105. 105 or 115. I think 105. 111. All right. Yeah. And nobody, and not to confuse anybody, there's not one person on this panel that believes an ad is a first appearance, just to let you guys know. But, uh. Well, I mean, uh, hey, don't, 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 don't judge me, bro. <laughs> hey, don't at me. <laughs> Judge, I, I'll determine my own thing. Aaron, did we uh, complete the. Yeah, so this? just real quick, uh, back to uh, what Carter's original pick was uh, that I accidentally put up the 180. His original pick was this uh, Incredible Hulk 181 at a 4 0 for the same price, like uh, at $3,907. Um, if this was the comparison, would this change anyone's mind to 181? I think I'd flip. Just because it's the most important Bronze Age book. Yeah, I think this is the most notable comic. I mean, if you're going to put your money where your mouth is, you're going to go off of this book. Yeah, I mean, this is... It depends, man. To me, they're both braggadocious books. Like, I actually have friends that happen to be um, uh, Punisher fans. I was sort of describing some of that, and, and and I I know it's not necessarily us, but like, they just really, they'd rather have the first Punisher than Wolverine. And if you're gonna give them, you know, double the grade, uh, they they do that. Uh, I don't. I honestly, at a four zero, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna flip. I'm still gonna take one twenty nine and a nine. I'm not, I'm not going to flip. I, yeah, it's too low of a grade to pay that much money, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hell no. When I I understand our, our the state of comics right now, but uh -huh. man, I'm just not going to pay that much for for a a dish rag of a book. You know? It doesn't even really present that well. I mean, it's not like it's not damaged or anything, but it's kind of like dirty yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey, compare, hey compare um it's a well dirty are you taking a well read book, book. My soul. <laughs> <laughs> compare a 120 compare a um uh asm 129 to like the first ghost rider which is like in the 90 which is like 5000 or um uh, Werewolf by Night 32, which in the 90, which is 5,000. You know, I think the only 
like of those really like higher end Bronze Age first appearances, I think the only one that is maybe slightly lower is the first Blade. You know what I mean? It, it, like those he's those very, two are neck and neck. Very irrelevant to Marvel in general. As yeah. is Werewolf Finite or as is Moon Knight. You know, I mean, yeah. yeah. There's more Wolverine out there, but he's much more of a well-known, admired character. I to me, like, uh, okay, the, so the first, uh, like, I always thought that uh, Wolverine and the Punisher were, like, neck and neck. Or, at the very least, you had Wolverine at the top, and then you had the Punisher, like, slightly trailing behind. And I mean slightly. I mean... You know what I mean? Uh... Overstreet would not disagree with you. Overstreet mm -hmm. for 20 years said the exact same thing. We're yeah. coming in on the back end and saying like, oh, maybe one of these characters is better than the other, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, well, well I mean, Wolverine just... Look at my Overstreet in 1990. 1990 Overstreet prices. Uh... I think Punisher is probably higher, right? Uh, over probably, probably. probably. Yeah. There's a good chance. That that there, there's a good chance of that. Um, but I don't I don't know, man. But maybe not. Yeah, 1990, maybe, but not very long after that. I'm sure. I think. Yeah, we'll not very long after. Right now. Like yeah. just. In the early 90s, Wizard did a. Uh, top 100 most collectible comics, and Hulk 181 wasn't on that list at all. 100? No. Yes. Was 180 on it? Was 180 no. on it? Nope. Nope. Holy cow. Can you believe that? Somebody is getting... There's some fuckery afoot. Yeah. Yeah. Send yeah. them a shirt, whoever made that list. <laughs> Yeah, and they might uh, Magnus uh, Robot Fighter number one. Uh, probably. Yeah. You know what? It's a pretty good uh, chance. Like Exo the spirit. Man of War was yeah. number nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah Magn Magnus Robot Fighter twelve was on there for sure. Because uh for there was dude, Turok had three months where he was way hotter than Wolverine. <laughs> People yep. forgot about the X Men arcade. And then all of a sudden, man, it was all about Magnus Robot Fighter. Okay, so back to the 129, like, to me, that is severe. Like, in a 9-0, that is way undervalued. I, and yeah, I'm I, way. I think it, 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 whoever got that book got lucky because, yeah. you know, I think, uh, you know, when you get in an auction, if you don't have a buddy, hey, cover my ass because I want 4500 out of this book, bro. You know? Just, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't think... Is is it that I can look it up? I don't I don't know if it's that far off from those prices though. I really I really don't. Like I, I think that's where it's at, and I and I and I, and I think for as important a book uh, that it is, it's just kind of incredible that that that's where that's where the price range is. You know what I mean? The seller didn't do himself any favors because he didn't yeah. put CGC in the uh, title. It was oh, yeah nine point oh. Yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, I'll, and it just I'll, a probably a card uh, seller. Didn't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got hit with the stupid tax. He didn't put a uh, yeah. Uh, he didn't put rookie card low pop. <laughs> <laughs> he forgot his key emoji. Yeah, rookie card low pop. No shit, AS, huh? ASM 129 in April, 9.0 sold for 5,500. 5, yeah, see, that was low. No kidding. Wow. Yeah, there was a 55 sale. That's that's been the highest, but the, even the um, – I just looked it up too. The, even the 90 days, uh, 4,454. So someone just got it. What was the one that we had up, 2,900? Uh, 3,800. Yeah, I, I – you know, There's I wish I could have gotten it at that point. In January – I could buy all of them, whatever. January fifth, that was twenty one hundred. February fifth, that was twenty five hundred. Uh, March tenth, that was forty four hundred. Uh, there's a lot of sales. I'm skipping a bunch. Um, 
March, April, the beginning of April, still uh, 4,800. And then there was, uh, like you said, the um, the uh, $5,500 sale. And then it's gone uh, down a little bit. And then, yeah, this May 23rd was uh, 3,800. So, yeah, you know what? Hold your ground on this shit. Yeah, Don't dude. Fucking, yeah, right? Fucking, don't get fucking impatient and run an auction. Unless you got a bunch. Like, I think I'm going to auction a, um, a Ultimate Fallout 4 second 9-8 just because I keep getting them and I spend a bunch of money on them. And, like, just draw some views to listings. And I'm, uh, I got more left and a lot more to grade. So stuff like that, that's fine. But, like, this book, man, this isn't... This isn't the uh, probably not the best time to eBay auction. You never not. know what you're, doing, you're gonna get in, but like people with real money don't care about getting a deal. People with real money will be like, "Yeah, one sold for fifty-five. I get this for five. Will you take five? And they'll be like, "Yeah." Then you're good. You don't run the you don't run the risk of, of having this end at thirty-eight hundred. You know when you don't Carter, have a title. <laughs> Carter left these ones for me the other day. Well, those are nice. Yeah. Where nice. was that at? What do you mean, was that at? You left within an hour. Oh, that was at the show. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I could, I could, I could, I couldn't do it. I was way too. I was sleepy. I was, I was really out of it. I couldn't do it. Pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I like, want to thank everyone for playing Dealer Flipside. That. Uh, thank you, Carter and Phil, for providing books for me. A big shout out to Mighty Bell V for also picking out books for comparison. Uh, anyone on the panel or anyone that's listening, feel free to hit me up and like make suggestions. Like I'm all ears. Um, check out our other content on the channel. Make sure to like and subscribe. Later. Later, dudes. <laughs>